one of the features that is configured for radio profiles is called band steering. And it's a feature specific to the Wi-Fi Zero interface or to the 2.4 GHz radio. And like we mentioned before, the 2.4 frequency band has three or four non-overlapping channels and 5 GHz in terms of channel reuse, in terms of the uh, number of available non-overlapping channels is much better than 2.4. So naturally we want our client devices to use 5 GHz whenever available. Now not all client devices are created equal as we saw and the decision between 2.4 and 5 GHz if that same SSID is available on both comes down to the client. Some of the older clients will select whichever signal is stronger. So they will make a decision on which frequency band to connect to solely based on the RSSI observed. Some of the newer clients already prefer 5 GHz or 2.4, so you don't have that worry. But in cases where you have a mix of clients, you don't know what's com what kind of clients are coming in, you might want to use band steering to make sure that uh, all the clients or the majority of the clients goes to 5 GHz. And that will ensure best possible experience for your client devices. The way this feature works is, so client devices discover networks in two ways. They either passively scan for beacon uh, frames, and beacon frames are periodically sent out by the APs, basically telling all the clients, hey, this is the network that's available, this is the network that's available. Uh, and at the same time, the access points can use an active discovery method, which is called probing, where a device, a client device, will send an active probe, um, probing the access points for which SSIDs they support, and access points will respond with their uh, appropriate SSID names and what kind of um, features and connectivity they support. So a 2. gigahertz only client will send a 2. gigahertz only probe request. And the AP would normally respond on that same frequency band. And the client would be connected on 2.4. If we have a client that's capable of both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, but is out of range of the 5 gigahertz radio. Now, when we say out of range, uh, this will strongly depend on your Wi-Fi design. And out of range is here because if your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radio are at the same power output setting, the 2.4 frequency um, has better propagation properties and travels further. So if, you st if your client is standing at a sp in a specific place in uh, the room or uh, in your office, the 5 gigahertz RSSI is going to be lower from that AP than the 2.4 gigahertz RSSI observed. And the client might make a decision, oh, I will actually go to 2.4 because I consider the 5 gigahertz to be out of range. So what happens here is this type of client will actually send probe requests both across 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. And what's going to happen is, well, it won't hear the response of the 5 gigahertz radio and it will connect to 2.4. So no band steering takes place right now because right now we're talking about physical access to the wireless medium. And the third option is when you have a Wi-Fi device, Wi-Fi client, that is both in range of the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz radio. This is where band steering comes into place. And in this case, the device will send two probe requests, again, one over 2.4 and one over 5 gigahertz. But the AP will only respond in 5 gigahertz. And this is what band steering basically does. It suppresses the 2.4 gigahertz response on one of the bands and which is a 2.4 and only replies on 5 gigahertz. So the result of using band steering would be all the client devices that are within range of 5 gigahertz and capable of 5 gigahertz communication would end up on a 5 gigahertz frequency band. Uh, and that is what you normally desire uh, in your network. This is what you want, if, especially if you're deploying a high density environment. Second example of a feature configured in radio profiles is load balancing. While we won't go through every single feature in the lecture, uh, we will go through all of the features in the radio profile um, in the lab. But load balancing is a, is a feature that enables 
your APs to be able to distribute the client load between each other. And you can either do the load distribution based on number of clients, or you can do it based on the amount of traffic or uh, channel utilization that those clients are actually um, causing. The typical scenarios for uh, load balancing would be areas where multiple access points cover uh, the same or roughly the same area, uh, auditoriums, gymnasiums, open, open environments, uh, lecture halls. So in those cases you will have a lot of client devices, you will need to have multiple APs in that same area covering that same, um, co covering that same room. And what's going to happen is the clients will probably see all those APs as equal in terms of which one offers the best connectivity. Or they might prefer one of the APs. So if they see them as equal, um, you don't necessarily have a problem, but if they see one of the APs better than the other ones, just slightly better, maybe there's a 2 dB difference, maybe one is seen at uh, an SNR of 32 and the other one is seen at an SNR of 30, they will obviously prefer the one of 32. Now, that's not what you want because all the clients will then go to that one AP and the other APs are going to be idling by. Uh, that's not why you deployed multiple APs in that room. To avoid that scenario, you need to enable load balancing. And another reason why you'd want to deploy load balancing is for dual 5 GHz APs, because then suddenly you have two 5 GHz radios in that same access point, and you want to load balance between the two radios. So load balancing is used either for multiple physical APs or for dual 5 GHz access point to be able to load balance between the two radios. And what you want is you want your client devices to be distributed equally or as equally as possible between all the APs that are available, or if you're using dual 5 gigahertz, between the two radios available within the access point. Uh, and enabling load balancing allows you to do that. And you can do that either by number of clients or by channel utilization cost by those clients. And this will enable you to deploy successful um, high density deployments in open areas. Let's look at a theoretical scenario of using load balancing. So let's say you're designing a Wi-Fi network and you need to deploy a Wi-Fi network for high capacity for this lecture hall or lecture room that we have on the screen. Well, the first thing you're going to do is you need to determine how many access points you want and where you want to deploy them. And to determine that, you will do your uh, capacity plan, you will find out how many devices are expected to be in this room, you'll allow for some growth, and depending on what kind of devices you expect, are they one by one, two by two, three by three devices, and how many users are there going to be in the network, and what kind of applications are going to be using, you will determine the amount of access point that need to cover this same area. Now you have two choices here. Um, you can implement load balancing using directional antennas, where you would deploy those let's say four access points in different places, and then you would use directional antennas so that each of the access points would only cover one section of, of this lecture hall. So that would be implementing load balancing based on the RF environment. So because the signal is going to be stronger for one particular AP in that area, clients will naturally uh, gravitate towards connecting to that AP. So you have load balancing without having, actually having to turn this feature on on the access point. But say you're deploying this with omnidirectional access point. For economic reasons, maybe you don't have the option of uh, mounting directional antennas and you're stuck with omnidirectionals. So with omnidirectionals, you would deploy all these access points, maybe in four different uh, areas of the room, maybe somewhere near the corners. Uh, and all those access points would cover the area in a similar way. Well, that's when you would need to turn the load balancing on because if you don't, then client devices in the back might prefer one of the APs in the back against the or over the other, and clients in the front would prefer one of the two APs in the front over the other. So, uh, another consideration with load balancing is uh, obviously we would prefer to deploy it using the RF environment, not necessarily by enabling this feature. And the other thing is if you need roaming, if roaming is a requirement, do not enable load balancing uh, and do not enable band steering. 
because it introduces delay when a client goes from one AP to the other. So when a client changes their connection from one AP to the other, both these mechanisms will introduce delay. Uh, only use these two mechanisms when you expect your client devices to be relatively static, not moving around all the time, not being mobile.